So today we're going to learn about the ratio test for convergence. All right. And what the ratio test says is if we let sigma n equals k to infinity, a sub n be a series with positive terms. So we're going to force this to be positive by taking the absolute value of it. Okay. Then if the limit as n approaches infinity of the next term over the previous term, if that limit is less than one, then the series converges absolutely. And if that limit turns out to be greater than one, then it, the series diverges. And then um, if we, if it equal to one, then we can't use it. We're gonna have to figure out some other test to, to use, okay? And this is gonna be a really, really important test on the AP um, Calculus BC exam, okay? All right, so a lot of times we're gonna use these um, for series that converge very rapidly, okay? And so things that involve factorials and exponentials. So those are the two of the things that grow the fastest. So when we have these exponentials or when we have um, factorials, you probably want to be thinking in the back of your head, hey, we, maybe I want to use the ratio test to test for convergence or not. Okay. All right. So let's look at some simplifying of some different um, expressions next. So for this first expression in factorial over n plus one factorial, recall that this one is one bigger. So really, this becomes n factorial over n plus one. And then the next one would be n factorial. So if we take n factorial and multiply it by n plus one, then we have n plus one factorial. And so right here, my n factorials would cancel and they this would make one over n plus one. And so that simplifies to this, okay? So this is another example of factorial, okay? So this is n plus five. So this one's gonna be larger than this one. So we're gonna have an n plus five. And remember, this is gonna reduce by one, right? So then we'd have n plus four. And then we'd have n plus three and then all the rest, right? So n plus three factorial. And then this would be n plus three factorial in the denominator. So this n plus three factorial cancels with this n plus three factorial. And so what we'd be left with is n plus five times n plus four. So this reduces to this, okay? Exponentials, okay, so when we have the same bases like this with seven, right? What we can do is we can subtract our exponents. So this really becomes seven to the n plus one minus n. Okay, so we have n minus n, that'd be just zero, right? So we'd have seven to the first, which is really just seven. So this one simplifies to seven. This one, okay, becomes, since they're both base e, this becomes e to the n minus n plus two, because that's the exponent for the denominator. And so this becomes e to the n minus n minus two, or e to the negative two, which means one over e squared. Okay, so this one becomes one over e squared. So we're gonna need to use this type of simplifying when we go to do the ratio test. Okay, so that's why I point this out to you and um, get, make you get a little bit better at it just by looking at these simple problems. All right, so let's go use the ratio test. So here we have a series that involves exponential and factorial, all right? So this is a prime candidate when you see something like this, okay? Prime for using the ratio test, okay? We should be, that's what you should think about using in a problem with this, okay? So here we go. So the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus one over a sub n right? And what does that equal in this problem? Okay, so this becomes the limit as n approaches infinity. a sub n plus one, well this, so we're going to have a complex fraction here, okay? And so this becomes two to the n plus one over, and then this would be n plus one factorial. And then the denominator would be two to the n over in factorial, and we're taking the absolute value of that. Okay, so I realized we could deal with the complex fraction, but really what we have here is a fraction divided by another fraction. So this is really elementary school math, right? When you took, um, when you divided two fractions, what you did is you, you multiplied by the reciprocal of the, the fraction you were dividing by, which in this case is this two to the n over n factorial. 
So what happens is this becomes a simpler version of this becomes the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of two to the n plus one over n plus one factorial times. And then this n factorial becomes the, because it's the denominator here, now it becomes the numerator n factorial. And this numerator becomes the denominator. So two to the n. Okay, so if we multiply this by the reciprocal of this, right, that's what we wind up with here. Okay, so I'm going to, because we're multiplying fractions, what the things we multiply by right here, we can change the order. So what happens is I'm going to write this as the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 to the n plus 1 over 2 to the n, and I need my absolute value right there, and then times. So I'm going to group together my exponentials, and I'm going to group together my factorials. So this is in the numerator. So n factorial over, and this would be n plus one factorial. Okay. And so we should realize we just did this, right? So this would be n plus one minus n. This would be two. I need to close my absolute value. So then this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity. This would be two to the n plus one minus n. So that would just be um, the absolute value of two times this is n factorial. This is n plus one factorial. Well, really, this is n plus one times n factorial. So we have one over n plus one left over. So one over n plus one. Okay. And if we take a look at this, okay, that's always going to be positive. And as n goes to infinity, this is going to be positive. So really, we don't really need the absolute value, right? Because it's already going to be positive. So we don't really need the absolute value to make it be positive because it already is positive. So this becomes the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 over n plus 1. And we know that that comes out to be 0. All right. And so we need it to come out to be a number that's less than 1. And 0 is less than 1. OK. So we know that this is going to converge by the ratio test. So we can say since the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n is less than 1 because it came out to be 0, then we know that the series sigma n equals 1 to infinity of 2 to the n over n factorial converges by the ratio test. And that's all you have to say. Okay, so it's just a little bit more math than we than we have been doing, right? But it's it's actually pretty easy because it's kind of like formulaic, like you know, okay, so this has to be a sub n plus one, and this has to be a sub n, and then you're just finding this limit, okay, and doing a little bit of math to simplify it. That's really all this is. So the ratio test is a really good test. So we don't have to compare it to something else. So we don't on something like this when you have factorials. Earlier we did some problems like this, and we didn't. Um, we didn't know the ratio test at that point. And so we used like the direct comparison test or the limit comparison test to do these. And so that becomes a, becomes a little bit hard when you do it that way, okay? But now we have the ratio test. All right, let's go to example number two. So for this one, we want to determine the convergence or divergence of this series, all right? So since we have some exponentials here, I would, I would tend to think let's use the ratio test. Okay, and see what that gives us. Okay, so we're going to take a look at what is the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus one over a sub n. That's equal to the limit as n approaches infinity. And if we put n plus one in here, okay, so we have absolute value. And so this becomes n, this numerator becomes n plus one squared. And then this becomes n plus one plus one. So that'd be n two to the n plus two. And this denominator here becomes three to the n plus one. And then the, the denominator here is just a sub n. So that would be n squared times two to the n plus one over three to the n. I'm gonna extend my absolute value down a little bit, okay? So then this becomes, okay, so we have this fraction right here divided by this fraction. Well, that's the same as this fraction 
times the reciprocal of this fraction, okay? So this is the same as the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of an n plus one squared times two to the n plus two over three to the n plus one and then times, and this three to the n, when we take the reciprocal, it'd be three to the n over n squared times two to the n plus one. So what I'm gonna do is we have a square term here, we have a square term here. So I'm gonna put those together. I'm gonna to put my base twos together and I'm gonna put my base threes together. So I'm gonna write this as three separate fractions. So this becomes the limit as n approaches infinity of, n plus one squared over n squared and then times two to the n plus two over two to the n plus one and then times three to the n over three to the n plus one. Okay. So cleaning this up a little bit, okay, we're going to take n plus 2, and we're going to subtract n plus 1 from that, okay? So this becomes the limit as n approaches infinity of, and really, I'm going to say, okay, we don't need the absolute value because when I square something, right, it's going to be positive or zero. It's not going to be negative, so we don't need the absolute value for this one, and 2 to a power over 2 to a power, yeah, we don't need that's not going to be negative. And this one's not going to be negative, right? So we really don't need the absolute value for this. We only need it if one of these comes out to be negative, okay? So this becomes, I'm going to use a parentheses instead, n plus 1 squared over n squared times, and we're going to take n plus 2 minus n minus 1. So that becomes just 2 to the first, or just 2. And we're going to take n and we're going to do n, n, we're going to subtract n plus one. So that's really n minus n minus one. So that becomes three to the negative one power. So this is going to become one over three. So that means this is the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus one squared over n squared times two times one over three. Okay, so if we expanded this, the, the term with the biggest magnitude is going to be n squared over an n squared. So if I go to the limit as n approaches infinity, this is going to become one times two, and then times one third. So this really is just one times two times one third, which turns out to be two thirds, which is less than one, which means the series converges. Okay, so we could say since the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n plus one over a sub n is less than one. By that, and showing all this work, we now know that the series, the original series, sigma n equals zero to infinity of n squared times two to the n plus one over three to the n converges by the ratio test. I think this is my, probably my favorite test because there's a lot of there's a lot of math and simplifying involved in this one and I think it's I just think it's a lot easier um, to do than than many of the other tests. I mean the P series test is great too because it's really quick and easy. So is the geometric series test. But some of the other ones I think are a little bit a little bit hard to show and to think of and be creative in, like, especially in the comparison, like, what do you compare it to, right? That's really difficult for a lot of people. All right. Okay, so let's go on to example number three. So for this next problem, we want to determine the convergence or divergence of this series. So we have n to the n power, right? So that's not an exponential necessarily, but we have a variable in the exponent, right? So let and then we also have this factorial. So we probably should be thinking, let's, let's try the ratio test and see what happens. Because this is kind of 
like an exponential, but it's it's not really an exponential because this this base right here would have to be a number for it to be an exponential. So let's take a look and see. Okay, what happens with something like this? Okay, so here we go. So let's take the limit. Let's apply this ratio test. The limit is n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus one over a sub n. Okay, so in this case this base right here is going to be n plus one and the exponent is going to be n plus one and then the factorial is going to be n plus one so this becomes the limit as n approaches infinity big absolute value big fraction bar okay and so this is going to have a fraction in the numerator and it's also going to have a fraction in the denominator so this is going to be n plus one to the n plus one power And it over, and then this would be n plus one factorial. And then this denominator here would be n to the n over n factorial. And then I got to close my absolute value. Okay. So once again, this is a fraction divided by a fraction. So I'm going to change that to multiplication. So this becomes the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of n plus one to the n plus one power over n plus one factorial and then times. And so because I'm, I'm gonna change this to multiplication, this is now gonna be my numerator and n to the n is gonna be my denominator. So I'm gonna write this as n factorial over n to the n power. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group my factorials. I'm gonna put those together and I'm gonna put these two together as separate fractions, okay? So then this becomes the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of n plus one to the n plus one power over n to the n, and then multiply that by n factorial over n plus one factorial. And we should realize that if we drop this by one, that would give us n factorial, right? So this could be rewritten as n plus one times n factorial, and then our n factorials would cancel, okay? And this one can be rewritten as n plus one to the n. So, so when do we, do we add exponents? It's when we have the bases that are the same, right? So we have a base of n plus one to the n, and then multiply that by n plus one to the first. So this becomes the limit as n to the inf uh, as n approaches infinity of this right here becomes n plus one to the n times n plus one to the first, which is just n plus one over n to the n, and then times that by again, this is this is n plus one times n factorial. So this, that becomes one over n plus one. And if you take a look, this n plus one is gonna cancel with this n plus one. So we're gonna be left with this over this times one. And really, if you start to look at this, okay, so this can't be negative. This exponent can't be negative. Um, this can't be negative. This can't be negative. Like this will not be negative. So we actually can remove the absolute values too. Okay, so this becomes the limit as n approaches infinity of, and it becomes n plus one to the n over n to the n. And since we're raising both those to the n power, we could actually rewrite this as the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus one over n raised to the n power, because that's just an exponent rule that we can apply. Okay, so now if we take a look at this, this fraction that's inside this power right here, as n goes to infinity, well, this plus one is in insignificant, so we're left with this becomes one, but the exponent becomes infinity, and this is one of those indeterminate forms, right? So we wind we're winding up with one raised to the infinity power, right? Which is an indeterminate form, which means to figure out what this limit is, we are gonna have to use L'Hopital's rule. 
So we're gonna have to use L'Hopital's. So this is one of those situations where we have to use L'Hopital's rule to, to determine this limit, okay? All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna scoot down a little bit and we're gonna do L'Hopital's down a little bit lower, okay? And we're gonna figure all that out. Okay, so one of the things we do when we have one of these indeterminate forms like this, right, where it's a power indeterminate form, we're going to have to get this power out of there, right? So we're going to call this our function, but replacing n with x, okay? So let me slide down a little bit, okay? We're not even going to worry about this right now. We're just worried about figuring out this limit, okay? We're not, like the convergence is off the table right now. Let's just worry about figuring out what this limit is, Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let f of x equal this, but instead of n's, we're gonna have x's, okay? So x plus one um, over x, right? And raise that to the x power, all right? Now, what we have to do is we gotta get this x down out of this exponent, right? And we need to create a ratio in order to determine L'Hopital's rule, okay? So to get this exponent down, what I'm gonna have to do to this f of x is I'm gonna have to take the natural log of both sides. So that makes natural log of f of x is equal to, if I take the natural log of this side, this x can be brought down and we have x times ln of x plus one over x. Okay. I need a ratio though, right? That's what I need. I need a ratio, not a product, but every product could be written as a ratio. So if we take this and multiply this by one over X over one over X, this X and this X are going to cancel. And I'm going to be left with a denominator of one over X. I'll be left with this denominator. So that makes LN of F of X equal to the natural log of x plus one over x over one over x. And so we have this, right? So what happens, okay? So now we wanna take, now we wanna find this limit, okay? Because if you recall, we can rewrite this as e to the ln and keeping the same function. So I'm gonna show that in a minute, okay? But what we have to do when we, when we have L'Hopital's rule like this, what we have to do is the limit as x approaches infinity of this function, which means we've got to do this one, okay? So we've got to figure out this limit, which is the limit as x approaches infinity of this. Okay, so with that said, we're going to take the limit as x approaches infinity of ln of f of x. That's equivalent to over here in saying that the limit as x approaches infinity of ln of x plus one over x over um, one over x. So as x goes to infinity, all right, this denominator right here is gonna go to zero. What's happening to our numerator? So in our numerator, okay, we would be taking, since this is a composite function, we're gonna take the limit as x approaches infinity of this and this inside piece is getting closer and closer to one, which means the natural logarithm is getting closer and closer to zero. So what we have here is zero over zero. So we would need to write the limit as, actually, I wanna do it right here, okay, instead. Because this is what's gonna allow me to use L'Hopital's rule, is this statement right here. So we know that the limit as x approaches infinity of ln of x plus one over x, that's equal to zero. And we also know that the limit as x approaches infinity of one over x is equal to zero. So we have this situation now by rewriting this this way that we have zero over zero, right? And we can now use L'Hopital's rule. So L'Hopital's rule says, okay, take this limit and we got to find the derivative of this over the derivative of this. Okay, so we gotta think of this as being x to the negative one, all right? So I'm gonna just draw a little arrow here. This is x to the negative one power. Okay, so L'Hopital's rule says, okay, you can still do this limit, but you're gonna have to do the derivative of this over the derivative of this, right? And so the limit 
as x approaches infinity of the derivative of ln would be one over what we're taking the natural log of. So that would be one over x plus one over x. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna write it that way. Okay, even though this is this is gonna get ugly really fast. Okay, so hang in there. All right, just hang in there. So what we're gonna have is one over x plus one over x. That's just that's simply the derivative of ln. And now inside that, we got to use the chain rule. So now we're gonna take the derivative of this. Well, the derivative of this, I'd have to apply the quotient rule. Okay, so the derivative of the top would be one times the bottom, which is x minus the top, which is x plus one times the derivative of the bottom, which would just be one over this bottom squared all over. And remember, one over, we had one over x here, right? So that makes the derivative of one over x is really the derivative of x to the negative one. So that'd be negative one x to the negative two power. Okay. So cleaning this up, this numerator is x, and then this would be minus x and minus one. So this numerator would become negative one. So the limit as x approaches infinity. So this numerator becomes negative one. This, when I multiply x plus one, um, times or x plus one over x times x squared. This x is going to cancel with one of these. So I'm going to be left with x times x plus one. And then this can now be rewritten as negative one over x squared. Okay. And kind of similar to what we did up here, right? We're dividing two fractions. So we could rewrite this as um, the limit as x approaches infinity. And we could write this as negative one over x times x plus one. And then multiply that by x squared over negative one. So what happens here is our negative ones cancel. This x right here cancels with one of these. So I'm gonna be left with x over x plus one. So that makes this the limit as x approaches infinity of, and it becomes x over x plus one. Well, as the limit as x approaches infinity of this one, well, this plus one is insignificant. So we have really x over x. So this limit winds up being, I'm gonna slide it up a little bit. This limit winds up being equal to one. Well, now you're at the point thinking probably, well, what the heck, where do we go from there, right? Okay, so why did we go about doing all this, okay? We're really trying to find this limit, right? So way back up here, we're trying to find this one, right? Find this limit right here, which is really this one right here, right? It's just, this is with X's and this is with N's, okay? So back to this, we are gonna write the limit as x approaches infinity of x plus one over x raised to the x power. Okay, Re recall that's what that's what we had up here, right? And we, here we were calling that function f of x. So really, this is f of x. Okay, so that creates this: the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x. But we can rewrite f of x with an ln as long as I also use base e, right? That's still going to be f of x. So this winds up equaling the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the ln of f of x. So this is why right here, because we're going to be able to rewrite it like this. This is still f of x, right? This is still f of x, which is f of x here. And f of x here was this, and this is the same as right up here, right? Okay, and so this is gonna allow me to say, okay, this is equal to, and since this is a composite function, we can take e raised to the limit as x approaches infinity of ln of f of x. And that was why up here, we we're doing all this work to figure out this limit. 
because we knew we could come back or we should have known we could come back and write it like this okay so this whole limit yada 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 right this came all down here all this of this all and this came out to be one so what we're saying here by writing all of this right all of this logic that we used right here this becomes one so this this exponent right here becomes one this is e to the first which is e so we did all that work to show back up at the top that the limit as n approaches infinity right which is the same as what we did right here right down here it comes out to be e so we know this limit right here comes out to be e and we know e is a number we should know e is 2.7 yada 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 right but it's what's important is e is, is a number that's bigger than one right so since this limit is bigger than one we know the series diverges and that was a lot of work just to prove that it diverges but that that's diverges okay so so back up here i'm going to draw a line through all this because this was all my finding the limit prop prop um process right so right here so since the limit <laughs> as n approaches infinity that was just so much work right a sub n plus one over a sub n is greater than one right it's bigger than one because e is bigger than one okay that's telling us by the ratio test that this original series diverges okay so so since this is true we know that this series n equals one to infinity n to the n over n factorial diverges by the ratio test I would never say this was easy. Okay. This is a really, really complex problem. This is, this is probably something you would get, you know, like in homework in college. Okay. All right. So I just want to make you aware of this. And so we had to use, because we got to one of these indeterminate forms. Okay. So how do you, you got to find the limit using L'Hopital's rule. And that's why I'm going over this. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's look at this last example. Okay. Okay. So for this final example, okay, we want to de determine the convergence or divergence of this, okay? Now, taking a look at this, all right, we have the square root of n and we have n plus one. And notice we also have negative one to the n, right? Okay, so I want to talk about like this, this, one, this problem right here, I would not say the ratio test is a good test for this. Ratio test is really good when you have exponentials and when you have factorials, okay? So we don't have either one of these here's, re, here's, we really don't have either one here, okay? Um, I still, I'm gonna use the ratio test because I wanna show you what happens when you make a mistake and you choose the wrong test, okay? Um, and so I wanna go through that with you because I think that's just good experience to look at this. That's gonna cause us to take a little bit longer than it should, all right? But I wouldn't, if this, the go-to would not be the ratio test here, okay? This is more like maybe the P series test or something. Maybe you could rewrite it and maybe a limit comparison test or something like that. Um, and also maybe that's a possibility. But the other thing is this right here, we have negative one to the end. So when you have negative one to the end, right? When you have negative one raised to a power like this, that's changing, that's gonna cause us to have alternating signs, right? And so because we have alternating signs, I would also be thinking, hmm, maybe not powers, but maybe that alternating series test. Okay, so back in your mind, let's let's think about those things. Okay, so let's take a look what happens if we apply the ratio test to something that doesn't have factorials and doesn't really have exponentials. Okay, because this one doesn't have either one. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. So the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus one over a sub n. Okay, so this is going to equal the limit as n approaches infinity of, okay, so this first one, this is this exponent is going to be n plus one for the a sub n plus one term. This exponent is going to be n plus one under the square root is going to be n plus one. This is going to be n plus one, but I'm going to have to add one. So that's going to make it n plus two. So this is going to be negative one raised to the n plus one. Okay, and then the square root of n plus one okay, 
over n plus one plus one, that'd be n plus two, like I said, all over, and then this would be negative one to the n, and I need to extend my absolute value, okay? And this would be the square root of n over n plus one. Okay, because we're taking the absolute value of it, right? This negative one, this is gonna cause some of the terms to be negative, right? And that's this one's gonna cause some of the terms to be negative. We can actually ignore that because we're actually taking the absolute value, right? Because if we take the absolute value, of it doesn't matter. It's gonna be positive, right? So that we can just throw these out. And we can also look at this as this is a fraction divided by this fraction. So I can write it as a, as a product. So that's what I'm gonna do next. The limit is n approaches infinity of the absolute value of the square root of n plus one over n plus two, that's this fraction right here, and multiply that by, and this denominator actually becomes the numerator when I change it to a product. Okay, and then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite it so it's n plus one over n plus two, and I'm gonna put my square roots together, okay? So that makes this the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of the square root of n plus one over the square root of n times n plus one over n plus two. Okay, so really, because n's going to infinity, this is gonna be positive, this is gonna be positive, so the, this fraction is gonna be positive. N plus one, when N is going to fade, that's going to be positive. This is going to be positive. So there's nothing that's going to be negative. We can actually take out the absolute value. We don't need the absolute value at all because both these terms are going to be positive. So that makes this the limit as N approaches infinity of, and since we're square rooting the numerator and we're also square rooting the denominator, we can write that as a single square root of N plus one over N. So this becomes the square root of n plus one over n, and then times that by n plus one over n plus two. Okay, to take the limit as n approaches infinity, that's gonna be the limit of the square root term right here, right? And so to do that, we're gonna to have to take the limit as n approaches infinity of this inside, because this is a composite function, okay? So as n approaches infinity of this, this one becomes one, and the square root of one is, one, right? So this becomes the square root of one. And then times, as n goes to infinity, this is going to be this plus one, this plus two are insignificant. So we're left with n over n, which is one. So we're left with the square root of one times one, which is one. So what does the ratio tell us when this limit comes out to be one? Well, the ratio, tell, ratio test tells us it's inconclusive, okay? So we know the ratio test is inconclusive. So what that means is when we, when we use the term inconclusive is it doesn't tell us it diverges, but it also doesn't tell us it converges. We, we still don't know anything about this, okay? All right, so the ratio test is, is an utter failure here, right? It doesn't work, okay? It doesn't work. And part of it is because we don't have exponentials and we don't have factorials, okay? Um, I don't want to say that, you know, that's, that's the reason why this doesn't work, but, but that's why I wouldn't have chosen this, okay, is because it doesn't have factorials and it doesn't have exponentials. So what else could we use, right? So since we have this negative one to the end, we probably now should be thinking, hey, what about that, that alternating series test, okay? So let's try that, and we're going to have to put a little bit of a spin on this, and I'm going to show you another way um, of looking at part of the test for alternating series. So remember, for an alternating series, we have to show that the terms a sub n, okay, is, is positive for some, um, for all n greater than or equal to one. And then we also have to show that the limit as a sub n, and remember my a sub n is going to be this right here, the square root of n over n plus one. So I have to show that this is positive. I have to show that the limit as n approaches infinity, that this goes to zero, okay? And then I have to show that, um, the next term is smaller than the previous term for some value of n um, bigger than or equal to one, okay? All right? All right, so we know, we're gonna apply, start pl applying the ratio test. We know that a sub n, um, we have to show, or a sub n rather is the square root of n over n plus one, 
Okay, so it's the positive term, right? It's taking out this negative one. All right, that's going to be our a sub n. Okay, so what do we know? Well, the square root of n over n plus one, that is actually for n greater than or equal to one, this is always going to be positive, and this is always going to be positive. So this is always going to be greater than zero for n greater than or equal to one. That's going to be true, right? This numerator is going to be positive. The denominator is going to be positive. We're good, right? Okay. All right. So the other thing we got to show, that's the first part, right? Showing that a sub n, that, that they're, they're all going to be positive. The other one that I would go to right now is let's do the limit as n approaches infinity of this. So the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of, and this is really, square root of n is really n to the one half over n plus one. So if we do this with magnitudes, right, the denominator has a n to the first power, and this is n to the one half power, right? Numer or exponents that are bigger, okay, are going to grow the fastest, okay? And this right here is going to grow faster than the numerator because it has a higher power, okay? This is a power of one versus a power of one half. So this one's going to grow faster, and that's in the denominator. So this is going to grow faster than this one, which makes this entire fraction get closer and closer and closer to zero. All right. So you could also use L'Hopital's rule on this. Okay. So if you took the derivative of this, this would be one. Okay. And this would come out to be a value. And you would see that this comes out to be zero. Okay. So whether you use L'Hopital's rule or you use magnitudes, okay, um, you, either way, it's going to come out to be zero. Okay, so we met two of the conditions for that alternating series. Now for the third one, right? And the third one says that a sub n plus one has to be less than or equal to a sub n. Okay, so this next term, right, is smaller than this one. That means the terms of the series are decreasing. Okay, so this is a spin on how to show that a sub n plus one is less than or equal to a sub n. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to switch this and make it make this become a function, okay? And if we could show that this function is decreasing for some value of x on, then we would know that the series itself would also be decreasing, okay? The terms of the series would be decreasing, okay? So how do we show if something, if a function is decreasing? Well, we could take the derivative and look and see when, what values of x causes the derivative to be negative, okay? So that's how we're going to establish this, okay? So that's kind of a new way. I haven't shown you that before, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to let f of x, okay, equal the square root of x over x plus 1. I'm going to show that this function is decreasing, and if I show this function is decreasing, that means the terms of the series would also have to be decreasing because they're identical here, right? Okay. All right. So another way to write this, because I'm going to have to do derivatives, is this is x to the one half over x plus one. And so to do the derivative, I'm going to have to apply the quotient rule on this. Okay. So f prime of x would equal the derivative of the top here would be one half x to the negative one half, right? Because I'm going to have to subtract one from this. So that'd be one half x to the negative one half times the denominator, which is x plus one. And then minus x to the one half times the derivative of the bottom. And the derivative of the bottom would just be one, right? So that'd just be one. Or you could, if you didn't want to, you wouldn't have to write that. All over, okay? And then we would have x plus one x plus one, the denominator squared, right? So x plus one squared. Okay, so this is, this exponent right here on this x right here is two over two, right? It's one. So, so if I distribute this, right? This one with the x and this with the one, okay? I get f prime of x is equal to, and this would be um, one half x to the one half. right? Because this would be two over two, because we'd add the exponents. This is two over two with negative one half makes positive one half. And then plus 
one half x to the negative one half. And then minus x to the one half power all over x plus one squared. Okay, so this is really, um, well, out of these three, right, the smaller of these is x to the negative one half. I could, okay, factor that out if I wanted to, okay? Um, actually, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. Sorry, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. This is x to the one half over two. And then plus, this is one over two x to the one half. And then minus x to the one half, right? All over x plus one squared. Okay, so I have a complex fraction right here. I know I wrote this a little bit ugly, okay? So this is x, this one right here is x to the one half over two. This one right here is one over two x to the one half. That's this one right here. And then minus x to the one half, that's this one. I know that's a little bit, let me try to show that to you a little bit better. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna clear out this denominator and this denominator. So I'm gonna multiply by the numerator and denominator by this, okay? So when I multiply, let me write this out. So f prime of x is equal to, so I'm running out of room, so that's why I'm trying to squish it over to the side here, okay? So I have, I'm going to rewrite this because I'm not happy with it. X to the one half over two and then plus one over two X to the one half and then minus X to the one half power all over X plus one squared. And what, okay, so what I want to do is I want to clear out this denominator and this denominator. So multiplying by two will take care of both of those. And I also need to multiply X to the one half. So I'm going to multiply by 2x to the 1 half over 2x to the 1 half, because that's my version of 1. That will get rid of both of these denominators, okay? So if, I'm, if I multiply this first fraction by 2x to the 1 half, my 2s are going to cancel. I'm left with x to the 1 half times x to the 1 half, which would be x to the first. So f prime of x is equal to x plus, and then this is going to be 1. And then minus, then when here I'd have x to the one half times two x to the one half, that would give me minus two x. And then the denominator is going to be two x to the one half, right? Two x to the one half times this x plus one squared. So this winds up being equal to, my derivative winds up being equal to negative x plus one over. 2x to the 1 half times x plus 1 squared. So if I take a look at this, okay, remember my n, right, are, are 1 or bigger, right? So that means my x is bigger than 1, right? So this is going to be positive. This is going to be positive, right? When x is greater than or, greater than or equal to 1, this is going to be positive. This is going to be positive. The only thing that's going to cause this to be negative is this one, right? So when this, this numerator is the only thing that's going to cause it to be um, a negative value, okay? So what happens here is when is this going to turn out to be negative? So negative x plus 1, when is that going to be less than um, or equal to 0, okay? Or actually just less than 0, right? Because I want to know when it's negative. Okay, so this is always going to be negative. So when negative x, this is going to be less than negative 1. And so I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1, which is going to change the direction of this inequality. So this is going to happen when x is greater than 1. Whenever x is greater than 1, that's telling us that this original function, right, the derivative is going to be negative, which tells us when x is greater than 1, this function up here is always going to be decreasing. So since we replaced our series with this function and this function is decreasing, that in turn means the series is decreasing 
And that means a sub n plus one is less than or equal to a sub n. And that's a way in which we can show that this is true. So this is true for n, here it's x, but really n, n is greater than one. So basically our series is always gonna be decreasing, right? And since our, our series is decreasing, that means a sub n plus one is always gonna be smaller than a sub n. So we, sh we establish this by looking at and seeing that and showing that it's actually, it's decreasing, okay? So, so we show that a sub n is positive. We show that the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is equal to zero. And we also show that a sub n plus one is less than or equal to a sub n for n greater than one, okay? So we've established all these things. So what does that tell us? That tells us that this original series is converging. So we can say this, right? So it's really the, this, this right here, this, and this is the third thing that we need in order to establish that um, we can use the alternating series to show that this series is converging, okay? So what we can say here is that sigma n equals one to infinity of negative one to the n. Ah, let me slide it up. So negative one to the n. I'm, I'm just writing the series that was above, okay? Um, the square root of n over n plus one converges by the alternating series test. And you'll never have something this complex. Either one of these last two, you won't have something this complex on the AP exam, okay? Because you just, you run out of time, right? Okay, so this converges by the alternating series test. Okay, and that was our last example. And again, these last two examples, I do, I show you these because you need to know these for college calculus, not necessarily for um, the AP exam, okay? All right, so that's it. Um, that's our first day of uh, ratio tests. We're gonna spend another day on ratio tests tomorrow. Um, and that will be pretty close to being done with this unit, all right?